Hello friends, in this session we will deal with the classification of schedules on the basis of recoverability. So on the basis of serializability we have already seen in the previous sessions. In case you have not viewed those videos, you can please go back and view those series of videos which are also mentioned in a common playlist of various uh, transaction and concurrency control heading under the heading of transaction and concurrency control. So let's move in this session towards the recoverability part. Let's see how we can classify various schedules on the basis of the concept called recoverability. So first of all, what is a recoverable schedule or what is an irrecoverable schedule? A recoverable schedule is basically in which I am able to do and un undo my changes. Basically, I am able to undo something which I just did, right? And an irrecoverable one is in which I am not able to undo my changes. So, I would say a recoverable schedule allows you to undo your changes in which you can restore your previous state, right? If I am able to undo my changes, I am able to go to my previous state. So, I am able to restore my previous state, which is what basically is meant from the term recoverable and if I am not allowed or I am not able to recover my previous state, I would say the schedule was irrecoverable, right? So, now let's just take a deeper insight into it. How does it happen and why does it happen basically? So, the procedure is that whenever a transaction TI executes, there is always a transaction log. Basically, there is a log corresponding to every transaction and that is basically stored as log files into your database. So, log files storing various log records corresponding to various transactions and uh, they are created in this manner basically. You have, let's say whenever transaction TI starts, you have a start TI entry. Then corresponding to every update or change you make, you have an update entry. And finally, when the transaction commits, you have that commit entry over there. Right. So an example of update procedure or update call would be TI XJ V1 V2. What does it mean actually is TI transaction is performing a change on XJ attribute or XJ data item and value changes from V1 to V2. So, if I take an example of this, that would be like this. T0 transaction changes the attribute or the data item value of A from 100 to 200. Right. So, in this similar manner, we have various transaction logs over here. And the interesting thing is, after the commit of this transaction, the database actually removes this log or deletes the log corresponding to that transaction TI. Now, if we think upon this concept basically, so why would someone need to maintain this log? That would be required when I perform an abort or a rollback operation, basically a rollback operation, right? So when I say I need to roll back at a certain point, point in my transaction, what I mean is I need to undo the changes that I make. Now, how would the database know what was the previous state? Obviously, you need to keep a track of all the changes that you're making in a transaction, right? So whenever you perform a rollback operation, the database or the database, uh, component which is dealing with these things, it basically checks the log record corresponding to that transaction, right? And it finds out what was the previous value of TI. What was the previous value of TI before you performed this rollback operation? And that value is restored, right? So that, that is what happens. And now, that is uh, where the importance of this concept of log record comes basically. So you need to uh, keep these log record, maintain these log records for the concept of that rollback and to undo the changes at various points in a database whenever you issue some uh, rollback commands. So what will happen, let's say, let's just imagine what will happen if I try to roll back my transaction after a commit, right? What will happen if I try to 
undo my changes after a commit. Now, after a commit, as I just summarized right now, what I said was after a commit, the database removes the log record entry corresponding to that transaction from its records. So what will happen? It won't be able to find the previous changes or the previous values, right? I won't be able to find my previous values, right? So the rollback undo operation will not be possible. So this is exactly what makes my schedules recover irrecoverable. So if I'm saying a schedule is irrecoverable, that basically means that I am maybe trying to, I am maybe trying to undo a committed transaction or roll back a committed transaction. Now, since I am trying to roll back a committed transaction, I do not have its previous values with me. So, I am not able to restore it to a previous state. Thus, the schedule is termed as irrecoverable in such a case. Up next, in the next session, we'll deal with the recoverability levels. How we classify the schedules on the basis of various recoverability levels. And it's really highlighted in various questions of recoverability. So, I'll see you all in the next session. Up then, if you have Till then, if you have any doubts, please post them as comments in the comment section below. If you like the video, please like it. If you like the channel, please subscribe to it and keep following the upcoming videos. Thank you.